Hollywood seems obsessed with remaking classic films, but some movies are better left untouched. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst changes in movie remakes. Never send a monkey to do a man's job. For this list, we're looking at those changes in remakes that made us wonder why the movie was even made in the first place. We're using the word remake loosely here, as some may use different terms to label films, but if they've been described as such by the press or are considered straight up remakes in general, then they're eligible. Since we'll be delving into some key plot details, a spoiler alert is in order. You have got to be kidding me. This can't be happening. Shouldn't have come here. Number 10, change to campy comedy, The Stepford Wives. The original film, released in 1975, has become a cult classic over the years, thanks to its satirical concept and combination of the science fiction and horror genres. I like to watch women doing little domestic chores. You came to the right town. Essentially, the housewives of Stepford have been replaced by robots that happily go about their chores to please their husbands. The remake, however, changes the film's genre into campy comedy. That's like wanting to be gay with a bad haircut. Exactly. The original film works as a commentary on the male desire for subservient women, which is completely undermined in the remake because of the genre change. Remarkably, the remake even makes one of the female characters the main antagonist. Where would people never notice a town full of robots? <gasps> Connecticut. Number nine, changing his appearance. Godzilla. The original Godzilla, released in 1954, acts as a metaphor for nuclear weapons, a particularly relevant theme in Japan following World War II. <laughs> The 1998 remake, set in New York City, not only lacks this important symbolism, but also completely changed the look of the character. What are they doing? Perhaps attempting to build on the success of Jurassic Park, Godzilla was changed into more of a giant reptile. Everything was changed, from its color scheme, to its size, to its walking style. You know what that means? No, but I got a feeling I'm about to find out. The change was received poorly particularly in Japan, where the creature was officially rebranded as Jira or Zilla, symbolizing that TriStar took the god out of Godzilla. Number 8. Removal of Political Subtext – Swept Away on the surface, 1974's Swept Away may look like a rom-com about a man and a woman that end up stranded on a deserted island. However, there's an underlying theme about the conflict between capitalism and communism, and acts as a commentary on class and status in society. All I'm saying is there are problems raised by capitalism. Guy Ritchie's modern remake, however, lacks this political subtext. Madonna, who plays the leading female character, was particularly criticized for her acting. Is this another one of your jokes? What's left is simply a cheesy melodrama that earned a paltry 5% score on Rotten Tomatoes. Oh, Number 7. Making it an action movie – Ben-Hur We won't question the decision to remake Ben-Hur. Your situation is not unique, Juna. Neither are you. Sure, the 1959 film won a record 11 Academy Awards, including Best Picture, but that was over 50 years ago, so it isn't necessarily a terrible idea to give it an update. But how do you control what's up here? How do you fight an idea, especially a new idea? What is a terrible idea, however, is to change the film into a senseless, generic action flick. The modern version relies way too much on CGI, with several reviewers criticizing the film's editing. Despite having a bigger budget than the 1959 film, by nearly $85 million, the 2016 version actually earned $50 million less at the box office. Now that's a biblical failure. I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Number 6. Ignoring the title, I Am Legend Although I Am Legend is an adaptation of the novel of the same name, it can also be considered a remake of The Last Man on Earth and The Omega Man, especially the latter. The more people we inject, the more serum we'll get. Ironically, although it's the only film to share the name of the source material, it's also the only film to completely ignore the meaning of the name. What you say? What you say? 
In the novel, and in the first two adaptations, the main character discovers that he's become a legend among those infected by the vampire-slash-zombie plague, similar to how these creatures were previously legends among humans. Well, the premise is quite simple. The modern film, although commercially and critically successful, is more of a straight zombie flick without the connection to the title. Number 5. Flamboyant Willy Wonka – Charlie and the Chocolate Factory Willy Wonka is one of the most eccentric characters in all of literature, which was captured perfectly by Gene Wilder back in 1971, earning him a Golden Globe nomination. Johnny Depp's later portrayal of the Wonka Candy Company owner, however, was received much less warmly. <laughs> Wasn't that just magnificent? While Depp certainly puts his own spin on the character, many critics found his performance to be just plain weird, seeming more like Michael Jackson than Willy Wonka. When asked, although showing respect for Depp as an actor, Wilder said that he found the performance in the film as a whole to be an insult. Oh, poppycock. Number 4. Replacing Karate with Kung Fu – The Karate Kid Back in 1984, the story of a teenage underdog standing up to a group of bullies and beating them in a karate tournament became a cult classic. Uh, wax on, wax off, wax on, wax off. The remake has an almost identical plot, although karate has notably been switched out with Kung Fu. Take it out. Put it on. Take it off. While the remake is still an effective drama with impressive fight choreography, there's one lingering question. Why would a film entitled The Karate Kid revolve around Kung Fu? The change in martial art was so drastic that the film is actually called The Kung Fu Dream in China, while in Japan and Korea, it's referred to as Best Kid. That does not represent China. Given the false advertising, the US title should have been changed too. I will teach you real Kung Fu. Number 3. Abraham Lincoln – Planet of the Apes the ending of the original Planet of the Apes is one of the most iconic of all time, as Charlton Heston realizes that the alien planet he's on is actually Earth following a nuclear war. You blew it up! Ah, oh, damn you! God damn you all to hell! Tim Burton and company attempted to create their own iconic twist ending, but instead gave us one of the worst in early 21st century memory. Take your stinking hands off me, you damn dirty human! Mark Wahlberg returns to Earth, only to discover that the apes have already beaten him there. Or something. Wahlberg discovers that the Lincoln Memorial has been replaced by a monument to General Thade, and he's quickly swarmed by a police force of apes, neither of which makes any sense. I must be out of my mind, out of my mind. Number 2. They Don't Go to Mars – Total Recall some things are better left untouched. Released in 1990, Total Recall is still an immensely popular film and features Arnold Schwarzenegger in his prime. Consider that a divorce. So the decision to remake the film just 22 years later was a bit surprising to say the least. Even more surprising is the decision to change the setting of Mars to Australia, which the characters travel to via a gravity elevator running through Earth's core. I'm sorry, you know what? None of this makes any sense to me. We get that the remake was going for a more quote-unquote serious tone, but a trip down under isn't nearly as much fun as a voyage to the red planet. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. That's for making me come to Mars. I've never agreed with a number one pick more than on this list. But before we get to that one, here are a few honorable mentions. The Kraken. Let loose the Kraken! Charlie Croker. Hey, Stella. Didn't I tell you I never want to see you again? We are about to do a job in uh, Italy. It's a very difficult job. Once the wolves have finished with him, Belle will have no one to take care of her but me. For the sake of exhausting all of our options, do we maybe want to consider a slightly less gruesome alternative? LaFou. Oh. Oh. Don't move from that spot 
until Belle and her father come home. But, but, I... Ah, nuts. My boo? Yvonne is not my, my boo. No. Are you Yvonne? Are you my boo? No, I'm no. not your boo. Et la motivation, elle peut pas signer pour vous, là Non, 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 Magali n'a pas procuration. Not quite at the end yet. Almost there, though. Just be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. All right, back to business. Number one, peephole private time. Psycho. Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho is one of the most celebrated films in history and gave birth to the modern day slasher genre while also making us terrified of our showers. <laughs> Gus Van Sant decided to remake the film in 1998, but instead of updating the plot, he gave us a nearly shot-for-shot -shot remake. One bizarre addition, however, is having Norman Bates, played by Vince Vaughn, masturbate during the infamous peephole scene. Seriously, of all the things Van Sant could have changed, why did he think this was necessary? It's not surprising that the film was a commercial and critical disaster, with critics calling it completely pointless. What? Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.